Welcome back to the Coaches. I'm Coach Kim Murphy. We're back here on the Kim Murphy Podcast. I've got uh, Josh Reddick with me today, uh, who I have beat in Dinger Derbies for a long time now. So happy to have you on, Josh. Happy to be here. Ken, how you doing, man? You, gotta, you don't have to let the public know about all those derbies you kicked my butt in. I appreciate it. Well, you know, i got to let them know. The people need to know that uh, I'm still the champ. Even though i got the picture with you and uh, an old nature boy up back there, I'm still the people's champ. Right, he's a 16-time champ, so don't ever forget that one. Well, yeah, he's a, he's probably, he might be the only guy that, that can beat me up. I don't know yet. i gotta meet, I got to meet old Rick and let him know. Hey, he's 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 been around for a little while, so I don't know. I don't know if I like your chances very very good. I I don't either. You're a big wrestling fan, aren't you? That, that I am. I'm a big 33 year old wrestling fan. Hell yeah, man! I love wrestling too. I got some moves I break out every now and then when I rush the mound. So what's what's your signature go to? I like doing the running bulldog. I like doing that to the pitcher when I get out there. I like uh, catch you there. Yeah, yeah. Stand, standard John Cena right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good time. Who's uh? I mean, I know you met Ric Flair. I see it right there. Who's the coolest wrestler you met besides Rick? Oh man, gosh, that's that's. They're all pretty. They're all pretty good people when when you hang out backstage. But the one person I think that would kind of uh, stand out that really kind of wowed me was um, unfortunately he's not with them anymore. It was like Big Cass and Enzo Amore. Yeah. Former tag team champs. They're, they're, they were pretty awesome because they were huge baseball fans. And it was kind of funny because I didn't really like their gimmick at first. And uh, I was backstage and uh, Big Cass came up to me and says, no, you're, you're Josh Reddick. I'm like, yeah, man, what's up? He's like, oh, man, I've, I've followed you for years. I'm from, you know, I, I followed you since you were in like double A and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> and then uh, Fan, Fandango, or if you want to say Fandango, as he says it, he's actually a Portland, Maine kid. And he, he told me about, um, a game in 2008 that he attended where I hit like two homers and I was like, dude, you remember that? He's like, oh yeah, man, a huge Red Sox fan. I grew up going to Portland Sea Dog games all the time, so it was pretty cool to see those two actually follow my career before I yeah. got to where I was. So you you finally got to meet your only two fans. That's pretty cool. Hey, hey man, at least I got at least I have fans. Some people don't have that. Yeah, that's true. Nice yeah, I just got a bunch of people. I just got a bunch of people want to fight me, but I guess I call them fans. So. I'm fine it's pretty with that. funny. It's pretty funny. As popular as you are, you're still wearing earphones with wires in them in 2020. Yeah, well, you know what? I like to keep it old school to let people know that I, you know, I got old man strength, and I can still whip them. I don't care who they are. Well, I, I can send you some wireless ones if you, if you need a little help in your uh, nah. financial. <laughs> Hell, I, I made these myself. <laughs> Oh, okay, then that, that that explains everything. Then I'll, I'll take back that statement. I'll keep. I'll, I'll I'll sit on my wallet a little longer. Yeah, you're good. I made it with the tears of all the pictures I've taken yard. Ooh, you figure those wires would be a little bit. That, that'd be that'd be a little bigger wire than what you're using right now. Though, <laughs> well, you can't see the whole thing. It's 38 feet long. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. <laughs> yeah. You ever get in the ring with any of those guys? Any of those wrestlers? I would love to. I've actually only been in the ring once, and it was after a show. Uh, two years ago here in Houston, and I've, I've, I've tried to make something happen with them, whether it be during a show or before a show to kind of interact with them and kind of be a part of a storyline. But I guess I'm not cool enough, which makes a lot of sense because I'm Mr. Irrelevant in the world of baseball and everything else in life. So um, one of the security guys in Houston actually let me through there. So it wasn't even a guy who was associated with WWE. The show was over. And he goes, hey, man, you want to get in the ring? I was like, well, hell yeah, I do. And I got up on the hell road yeah. and did did all that stuff on the ropes and um, yeah. So all those guys in WWE never really gave me that shot. So I guess I'm past my prime in that one too. Well, you get there. I mean, it's still time. Hell, Hulk Hogan's still wrestling. He's like 90. He'll be fine. I got a chance. I got a chance. You know, if, if this quarantine 2020 stuff keeps on going, I might have to get a little side job and see what I can do. I mean, we all are, man. I'm going to start. I don't know what I'm going to start doing, man. That corner's looking pretty tasty right now, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting rough out here. You, you might have to consider you might have to consider being a right fielder if this quarantine keeps no, going. No, I would never do that. I'll just yeah, no, I'll just continue to punch myself in the face if I turn into a right fielder. <laughs> Let's see if I can make uh, money that way. Yeah, you probably could. What have you been doing you, during you'd the punch yourself in the face once. Yeah, Not well, much, man. I got uh I have I have I have two six and a half month old twin boys. Um my wife and I kind of just hang out at the house. We have a uh, 
50 acres here that we kind of roam around on. So we, we have our, our space to uh, not really worry about seeing a whole lot of other, other people. So we kind of do their little thing after, they, after they're done napping. We work on their stuff. They're rolling over. They're crawling. And if we, we go on them, walks, every, we can go on walks. You got that boy sitting diggers yet? Not yet. So when, when they get this, the standing and walking part, we, we're starting to work on that. But don't think I don't have their bats and balls ready. We have plenty of bats in their playroom with, with some baseballs and wiffle balls ready to go. Uh, they got all their equipment. They got the uniforms ready. And uh, so as soon as they can do that, I'll be flipping them the old soft toss. You ever get out there on that 50 acres and just start seeing how far you can bash one? Because I can probably take one uh, all the way off your property. You could probably, you could probably go corner to corner. I would yeah, imagine. Probably not, could. Not, just, yeah. not just front corner, front corner. I'm thinking front to back corner for you. Um, but no, not yet. Since this whole thing has kind of happened, uh, I've kind of put – you know, baseball, I wouldn't say on the back burner because you can't really just sit around and do nothing, but I have taken the time to kind of rest and let the body relax because as soon as the stuff does kick back in and you know, well, I guess not, you jog a lot. So for me, I have to do a lot of running. Yeah. So I, I kind of try to relax the body a little bit. And once it gets back in, I'll, I'll, I'll get the, the training intensified up a little bit more. And um, But no, not yet. I haven't really tried to see how far I can hit it. I'm, I'm, I imagine I can hit it pretty far. Yeah, I mean, you got to, I, I don't blame you. You got to get that cardio up so you can run from the dugout to the batter's box and then right back to the dugout. And then those right turns are tough, man. Yeah. Those, those short right turns are tough. Do you play, so you play in a, you, you know, you play a lot of right field. I got to ask you, have you perfected my janitor throw yet? You know, that's one thing I've never really been able to do. And I, I, I'm, as, as accurate as I may be throwing normally, I feel like if I did the janitor throw, I might be chunking it up into the seats, and I don't, I don't want to be hurting anybody because I can throw it pretty hard. But you played – I read that uh, I read that you played some shortstop growing up. I did. I was a shortstop until I was 18 years old. Um, why did why'd you it, switch from a great position to a dumb position? Uh, my high school coach, my junior year, it was a new coach coming in, and he said the first time he saw me play, he said, you're never going to play infield for me. So you might as well just go out to the outfield. And I said, well, why is that? He goes, well, one, you're too fast, and two, your arm's too strong. And I looked at him. I go, well, Rafael Percal is one of the fastest guys in the league with the best arm in the league, and he plays shortstop every day. And that didn't matter. So I wouldn't play, wouldn't play right field and center field, and the rest is history. So can't yeah, really I mean, mad at him. Yeah, no, I'm mad. I, I mean, I probably would have fought my coach if he said that to me because I'd be like, I make the rules around here. Well, I don't think I, I don't but, think I'd have one of the, I don't think I'd have one of those if I was a shortstop. No, nah, that's a gold glove back there, baby. That, that's one of them. Yeah, I, I got, got one of them. I, I got respect for that. I'm not gonna talk shit about a gold glove. Hell, I love it. Thank you. What, if you have you ever gotten to do a game to pitch? Have they ever let you go in and pitch? Hell no, man. You know how many times I've lobbied to be the pitcher in a blowout game? And yeah. I had I I'd do it all the time with with AJ Hinch. He would uh. I told him if we ever scored like 20 runs, that would be my opportunity. He looked at me and said, okay. And then one day in Toronto, I think it was, was it 17 or 18? I can't remember. We were, uh, I, was, I was off that day, and I was the only person who didn't play in the game. We scored 21 runs. And in the eighth inning, we were, uh, I think we were winning like 19 to 1. And so I told him I was going to go to the bullpen and start getting loose. So sure enough, in the, bottom of the, in the bottom of the eighth, I walked to the bullpen in Toronto. And all you see is me in the outfit in the uh, bullpen getting stretched and loose and ready to go. And sure enough, we scored like three more runs. So I called the boy. I picked up the bullpen phone and called him down there. And he, and he wouldn't even pick up the phone. Our bench coach picked up the phone and goes, it's Reddick. And he goes, time to hang up and get back in the damn dugout. So, um, no, hopefully one day I'll get there. I think uh, maybe a little bit here in a few years when I'm a little bit older and towards the back end of my career, it might be a little better opportunity to, to, to accomplish that goal. You ever clock your fastball? What do you think you can run that thing up to? Nope. So you ever clock uh, your fastball? What do you think you can get that boy up to? Uh, last I got clocked at a, uh, on a fastball was probably like 90, 91. Um, I imagine now I'd probably it'd probably be like 88. But if I, had, if I had to muster up one on an 2 count, I could probably get it like 93, I would imagine. I like that. I like that because – yeah, I'm gonna come take batting practice. Get you. That's that's prime dinger numbers for me right there. It's prime dinger speed. I mean, that's the ones I hit like about six hundred feet. Yeah, pretty much. That's that's yeah, pr pretty much. Hey, uh, we got to go ahead and pay for this episode, so I got to. We got to do some ads. 
here and uh i talked to my sponsors and they're like hell yeah we got some stuff for josh so i'm gonna start it off and then uh zach the producer he's gonna send you uh one of the ads that our uh big time sponsors came up with so here i'll start it off here's my ad today's episode of the kent murphy podcast is brought to you by muzzles are you one of those parents that sits in the stands and yells stupid things like don't swing at the first pitch or why isn't my son playing yet that's well, because he sucks mark so put a muzzle on it your kid is only on the team because we weren't allowed to make cuts muzzles Oh, that was brilliant. <laughs> that's a real that's a real company that uh that pays that pays for the episode. So I think you got one coming your way. I uh, do, I got another one. genuine company here. All right. Today's episode of the Kip Murphy podcast is brought to you by my favorite play in baseball, bunting. That's right. A nice bunt down the line is sure to get nobody excited. I like giving up chances to hit dingers. Instead, laying down a smooth bunt right back to the pitcher. Bunts, my favorite. Why the hell would you say that on my show? Uh, it, gets, it gets even better when you run into guys like Pete Alonzo. <laughs> I heard about that. I had him on here. He told yeah, me all it was, about uh, it. Yeah, it was pretty uh, embarrassing he, for me. Yeah, he said he didn't mean to, but I was like, I don't know who'd win that fight, me or none of you. And he was like, yeah, probably you, Kent. More than likely. <laughs> Yeah, he's a big boy. Uh, he's a big boy. He's he's a large man. Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> got uh, got another ad here. I'm gonna read. Today's episode of the Kim Murphy podcast is also brought to you by the janitor throw. We were talking about that earlier. Hey, are yeah. you a lowly <laughs> Are you a lowly right fielder like my guest today? Well, there's only one thing that'll save you: perfecting the Kim Murphy <laughs> janitor throw. It's a sliding catch where you pop up, do a curl hop into a diving throw. <laughs> Guaranteed to get any runner out. That's why they call it the janitor throw, because it cleans up the shit turds that are trying to get an extra base on you. Janitor throw. The only way to gain respect in right field. Hope your earphones not are to, turned up for that one. Not to mention it gets the ladies wild in the stands. Yeah, you already know, man. You better have flood insurance if you're going to break that one out. <laughs> I guess it's my turn again? Yeah, I think you got another, I got another, we got another ad for you here. Great, all right. This episode of the Kit Murphy Podcast is also brought to you by Lifting Weights. Are you a wimp like me and have tiny arms? We can't all be like the King, King Supreme Kent Murphy and just have unlimited raw natural talent derived from cheese dogs alone. Some of us need to lift weights. I know I do. Then maybe I hit a respectable amount of dingers. Lifting weights. I should probably start soon. <laughs> that's, a, I mean, that's, a, that's a good company, too, so they'll be happy that you read that. That's, That's pretty company. good. A guy, the guy that doesn't lift weights has hit 32 homers in one year before. That's pretty good. Maybe if I hit, maybe I lifted, I'd hit like 50. You know what you need to do? I looked it up. So you don't – you hit 32 dingers that year, but you struck out like 150 times. I was 10th in homers and 10th in strikeouts. Yep. Yeah, I mean, you were just swinging at everything. Now you don't strike out very much, but your dingers – also don't hit very many go back to, Yeah, well, you got to go back to just swinging at everything. And uh, you know yeah, that's, the way, the, that's the that's the way that's the way the game is now. It don't matter how many times you strike out, as long as I'm telling you, I'm telling you, that's how it works, man. Just I wouldn't. There ain't a pitch I don't like. I'll swing if they try to intentionally walk me. I'll swing at it. I don't care. But now they don't even yeah. pitch to you when they intentionally walk you, which is stupid. Yeah, it's silly. Making non-athlete uh, pitchers getting away with not being able to throw the ball slow to the catcher. Yeah, I hate it. When's the last time you charged them out? I've never charged the mound. The only time I've had to charge the mound is when another teammate did it. You got all those. I don't. I don't get hit. I don't. I'm the one. I'm the like probably one of the five players in the show that doesn't bat flip or pimp homers. Oh man, you got to start doing that. Oh, I, you know it's funny because last year when we were in the playoffs, I told him if I was ever going to hit a home run, I was just going to lay the bat down nice and easy and just flip the script on everybody. So when I hit the homer in the Yankee Stadium against Severino which was an upper deck bomb, by the way. Um, <laughs> I, I, I bent over and just set the bat down nice and easy because why would you want to torture your bat like that? The bat just gave you a reward with a homer. You got to put it down and treat it real nice. Yeah. I'll just go make yeah. another one if I break it. I don't care. I just like being different, Kent. Well, I ain't mad at you. You know, I thought about it, though. So maybe instead of doing bat, because one thing that you do a lot is you rob dingers. You rob – you take them away. I do that. So maybe you – Maybe you got to come up with a dance 
you know, like a move that you do every time you rob a dinger. Even if guys are on base, who cares? Let them go. You got to, you know, show them up a little bit. Let them know that you just took like away. Just, yeah, just like a glove, maybe like a little glove flip or like a little little red yeah. shimmy out there. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, you know, maybe do the nature board or so. Woo! Oh, yeah, you know, a little strut. The, yeah. A little, yeah, little strut, the strut, strut, strut to the janitor baby. throw. Yeah. That's See, I'm I've been, like, talking to the pitchers trying to get them to do a strikeout dance. I think you should do a Robin Homer stance. I think – I mean, I think we should have celebrations all over the place. I mean, the way the game's going, that could be happening very soon. Yeah, I mean, it ain't going to speed up the game or nothing, but at least, you know, help people get excited who about it. Yeah. Who cares about speed? Who cares about speeding up this damn game? But, I mean, with all these wrestling moves, you know, I think you ought to start charging the mounts more. Well, if I was Maybe. ever in the situation to get hit, I think they're all too scared to hit me. Um, well, to be, to be honest, you know, when you're hitting when you're hitting ninth, you don't really want to be hitting that guy. He's the one who he's your sleeper guy who, who might be a little crazy. So, um, and I think so. I think with my wrestling experience from going to events, playing video games like I uh, like I did with with wrestling, I think they're really scared and nervous about all the variety of moves that I can really pull out on them. I can put you in a submission yeah. move. I can put you in a power move. Or I could just be quick like a spider monkey and come at you real fast. Hey, I'm, I'm in, and plus you, you have, uh, you have the uh, WWE belt, don't you? Oh, I have pretty much eighty nine, probably eighty nine percent of the WWE belts that they had. About. Yeah, I think you should start wearing those to bat, just so people know you're the you're the damn champ out here. Wear it to the box, have the Bat Boy come get it from you. <laughs> yeah. Step in. yeah, set it down. Yeah, here, take it. I think that's, I mean, that's the that's the play right there. I'm in. I'm in for that. Anything yeah. that can help market market yourself is better. I agree. I agree. So you from uh, you from Georgia? Did you grew up. Were you a Braves fan when you grew up? Big time. South Georgia, Savannah, around the Savannah area, small town right above it. Um, big Braves fan. Team in the '90s. Um, they were. Every, everybody talks about how great they were, and you know, you, you hear about guys like Chipper Jones being a lot of guys' favorite players. My favorite player back then on that team was David Justice and Ryan Klesko. Which is two guys. I, I was a big Klesko guy myself. I was a huge Klesko oh. fan. Oh yeah, he let it eat in the box, didn't he? He didn't leave. Yeah, well, yeah, there. he would do that swing where he'd like he'd get into one, he'd leave his arm up like that. Yep. And that shit, but that was badass, man. I love that. Heck yeah, I love. I'll never forget where I was today on the '95 World Series with him. Yeah. Never. Justice Excuse could me. run into some too, though. Justice could run into a few. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, McGriff used 100%. to run into some. The crime dog, D A W G. Yeah. You had old Otis Nixon out there running around center field. Jeff Looking, Blouser. <laughs> yeah, Blouser. Lemke playing in the infield. Mark, Mark Lemke. Yeah, Terry, Terry Pendleton. Terry Pendleton. Yep. He stole a, he stole an MVP award. But uh, you know, he was pretty good, I guess. <laughs> snaked it. He snaked it. Yeah, man, that brace team. You got to give it to him. If you're the team of the nine, the decade, you got to give at least one MVP to those guys. Hey, I'm, I'm with you. You think you could hit a dinger off that pitching staff? Oof. I think I'd have a better chance hitting a dinger off a guy like John Smoltz than I would like a Greg Maddox or Tom Glavin. Yeah. That's, I mean, I yeah. I, Maddox, I, yeah. Maddox was unbelievable. Yeah, Maddox, he only threw like 82, but like he, for some reason, nobody could touch him because he was he just moved, all, he, he could put it where he wanted. It moved yeah, that but, much. About ten feet. I mean, I I probably would have hit a hundred dingers, but that's because you know that's, that's, that's who I am. Yeah, that's, that's, that's I am. what you do. That's probably. Do you think maybe that's maybe the best pitching staff ever? One, two, three. It's up there. If, if it's not, it's definitely up there. Uh, I and think then, then, down, then they had deep Steve down to the Braves fan for sure. They had Steve Avery and then in the it, four uh, spot and Kent Kent Merker for a little while, right? Kent Merker, Russ Ortiz came in on the on the end Russ, of it, I believe. Yep, yep for a little Russ bit. Ortiz. And then they yeah. had uh, Mark Mark Wollers in his one year wonder yeah. where he was just completely dominating. And then Javi Lopez started hitting fifty home runs for no reason. Fun fact: that's the bat model I swing. Javi Lopez. Is it really? Yep, I thirteen L. There you go. He hit, he hit like fifty home runs with it one year, so maybe you should start trying to do that. I did. I hit thirty two with it one year. I told you if I hit the weights, I might hit fifty. Yeah, or just start like I said, start swinging at everything again, man. Might as well. Yeah. Hey, uh, get paid. So I gotta, I gotta ask you if you remember when we was out at spring training a few years ago, and I was out there with Hank, my old buddy Hank. Yep. And your boy made us do, made us do the foot race down uh, right there in Old Town. Hank's oh, gotcha. 
Hank's trying to say he beat me, and I just need cover, confirmation that I beat him. I think you beat him by like 15 feet, didn't you? There we go. Yeah, actually, by a good I mean, margin. I think he whipped my butt, but that's because I was ready to fight him, and I didn't know we were running yet. Well, I think we I think we had a few cocktails that night too. So I think well, we, we did. We, yeah, we were out there. Our memory might be a little. Our, our memory might be a little wishy washy on that one. We're, we're doing a little bird dogging that night. I mean, it wasn't uh, wasn't for the uh, week of heart. No, sir. We were in a good time out there. That was so a great time. Know. I think I think I think you slept on my couch till about three at three eight, three in the afternoon that day. Yeah, I did. Uh, yeah, I sure did. <laughs> yep, and uh, I'm also, as it turns out, as you probably know. I'm the uh, world champion snorer. Yo, know, gosh, you let you yeah, you definitely let yeah. that eat on, on the. Like ground. I said, yeah. I do everything to the to the max, man. I, you know, I win at everything. So you de you definitely didn't you definitely didn't half ass anything those those days you were out there. No, man, we had I don't know about nine million pizza rolls. It was pretty good, uh, pretty good trip. <laughs> pizza rolls, <laughs> kind of love those. Hey, man, we gotta get going here in just a minute. I need a prediction from you. If they get this season going, how many dingers are you going to hit this year? I'm saying you can do 85. I'm thinking 42. 42. Okay, you heard it here. Guaranteed Short 42 season. 42 dingers. 42. Yeah, well, that's a good point. And I think you could probably rob about 38 of them. I'm thinking, yeah, that's, that's a fair You know number. what? Hell, just rob 40. You'd be the first 40-40 guy, but not with stolen bases. You'd be doing it with dingers. Hitting dingers and taking away dingers. And probably still wouldn't win a gold glove. Yeah, well, you already got one. Stop being I, got a, I, got, I, I got a better chance though. Mookie's out of the, out of my league, so I got a chance. Yeah, he moved he moved over to the uh, to the good side where they don't have DHs, and the yeah. and the pitcher actually has to play the whole game. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Josh, thanks for stopping by. Hey, everybody, thanks for listening to the Kim Murphy podcast, and uh, we'll be back with another guest another time. And until then. Hold that thing in there, baby. I'm Kit Murphy. Dang it.